How many of you have ever had somebody bug you? Raise your hand. How many are sitting beside that person? Raise both hands. How many of you have ever had somebody poison you? Okay, not, not, with, not with real poison, but words. They poisoned you with words. Let me, let me give you an illustration of this. A few years ago, a church, a friend of mine, his church, he lost 350 people. 350 people because of a lie. Instead of the 350 people seeing if it was true or false, the 350 decided to leave in protest. Well, what they did was when they left, they found out that they were poisoned and the person who had spread the lie, it was a lie. So the pastor a year later wanted to see where the 350 were. Were they going to church? What happened? Only 53 out of the 350 were going to church. The rest of them, not at all. It's amazing how people or situations will poison you. How, how you don't even know you're being poisoned. I mean, you, 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 the poison sometimes go, comes in fast, sometimes it comes in slow, slow, and you don't even know it's poison. I mean, uh, John Bevere has this incredible Bible study we do once in a blue moon here called The Bait of Satan, where Satan will use somebody, and they look like a believer, but they're really a wolf in sheep's clothing. And they start to spread poison. I am amazed at the poison people spread about me. I mean, it's unbelievable how people, I have people who, you know, he drives an expensive truck because he's filthy rich. My truck is a 2013 Ram. I bought it off my brother-in-law for 20,000. He ripped me off. I could have got it less from somebody else. He knows that. At his funeral, I'm gonna get the money out of his pocket. Here's the point, the poison. The poison, that, like, like poison where people are, are poisoned by, you know, oh, this church doesn't, th you know, blah, blah, blah. it's craziness. Well, today what we deal with is Paul in Timothy, and, and Paul has said to Timothy, look, I want you to be a minister, which we all are, even the people in the balcony. And what happens is he says, I want you to be an example to the believers, which we all are, a good example or a bad example, whether you like it or not, in, in your speech, in your conduct, in your faith, in your purity, in your love. Timothy, I also want you to be an example in your doctrine. Read the Word of God, teach the Word of God, and so forth. But then he goes on, and this is such a great scripture for kickoff Sunday here. Are you ready? He says, 1 Timothy 4.15, Timothy, be diligent in these matters. What matters? Be an example of God. Reading God's word, teaching God's word, being a minister to your family, to your friends, to, to the church. To the, uh, see, there's three ministries you have. Are you ready? Your family is ministry. Okay, whether you like it or not, your family is ministry. But my family doesn't listen to me. Yeah, but they're watching you. Your family. Your second ministry is the church. We all should be ministering in or out of the church. And your third ministry is out there. With your career, with your, your friends, with, with the world. And these three ministries, to be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them. How? By being an example with your speech, your, your conduct, your, your faith, your love, your purity. So that everyone may see you, Timothy, progress. Hey, when was the last time one of your family members said, man, Jesus is really growing in you? Wow. Or when was the last time 
somebody said, oh, you're a Christian? And then he finishes, watch your life and doctrine closely, preserve, per, perser, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and the hearers around you. So the first thing he says is be diligent. You know the word diligent is to be consistent with your effort, to, to accomplish, to be attentive, to be persistent in such a way in doing. Can I ask you something? And I don't mean this to be rude. Please don't answer out loud. Do people see that the lordship of Jesus Christ you're diligent for? I mean, usually your passion, your, your, whatever you're diligent for, people see. I have a friend who uh, collects antique trucks, drives all over to pick up an antique, just came back from Alabama to, to get an antique truck. Can you imagine going all the way to Alabama to get an antique truck? He's diligent. People know he loves antique trucks. See, here, here's the lady, she's sick in the Bible. She's sick for 12 years. And what happens is she's run out of money. The doctors can't do anything. She is weak, as weak as can be. She can hardly move. But diligently, she pushes her way through the crowd and touches the hem of Jesus' garment. Can I tell you something? Some of you are weak because you're too busy. Some of you are weak because you've been poisoned and you don't like the church. Some of you are weak because you're distracted. I mean, life is distracting you. Can I tell you something? Is Jesus' lordship more important than feeding your family? When was the last time you sat down and had a good Bible study with your kids? Now, I know you've sat down and had a good meal with them because I see how big some of our kids are. Here, here's the craziest thing. Isn't it amazing how we put food and fun ahead of the Lordship of Jesus Christ? And then when the kid gets 13 or 14, we get chewed out as pastors because my kid's not serving the Lord. Well, where have you been for the last 12 years, parents? See, the fact is this. They will know that we are Christians by our love, diligence to be consistent with effort and, and, and constant with effort to accomplish, attentive, to be able to push through the crowd of busyness or distraction or the poisons that are in our lives that are trying to make us weak. In our weakness, we push through to be diligent. See, here's the key. We need to make Father God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, Lord of our lives. Then he goes on and he says, Timothy, I want you to be diligent. Give holy to them. To what? To the matters, the will of God, the ministry of God. Being an example to the teaching. I want you holy. I, I, don't, want, I don't want you to give 90%, 95%. I want you to give 100%. Now, he, he says, somebody says, he's talking to pastors who are going full-time ministry. No, not at all. Dr. Billy Graham, when he was here, a great evangelist who's with the Lord now, when he was here in Toronto, he was on Huntley Street, and he said the, the, the farmer in Saskatchewan who's doing the will of God with wheat is doing just as much as I'm doing winning souls around the world. Because when you're in the will of God and you're giving it 100% for the Lordship of Jesus Christ, 100% for the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you're diligent. You're diligent. I mean, when was the last time you, you, you were wholly into studying the Bible? My nanny, my grandmother, she taught me this. Nanny would read the Bible three times a year. And we saw her as an example. I mean, when she passed away, everybody wanted her Bible. It was so well-worn. The fact is the lady taught us her breath of life came from the Word. And then he goes on and he says, watch your life. Well, what do you mean, watch your life? Well, watch your life so that you're doing God's will and you're also biblically righteous. What does righteous mean? Right in the sight of God. Not right in the sight of yourself, but biblically righteous. 
doing God's will. I, I have crazy people who come in and sit down with me and they tell me what they're doing and it's God's will and then I hand them my Bible and say, show me in the Bible where, where that's God's will. Show me where that's God's will. And, and, and the, I said, of course, the reason is this, that's not God's will, that's your will. You're just trying to make it sound righteous. Watch your life, Timothy. Can I ask you, when was the last time you had somebody who was godly, who was close to you, who was confidential, and you sat down and you said to them, how can I grow spiritually? Tell me the truth. You won't offend me. I have a friend named Chuck, big, ugly dude, big, ugly dude. I mean, seriously, we walk down the road, I look like Tom Cruise. I mean, he's just ugly. Many times I walk down the road, they think he's my dog. He's watching, I know he is. So. I don't even ask him. He'll say to me, you know, Jesus needs work on your attitude in that area. We need to pray. And he's not joking. I mean, there's people who poison me or, or bug me or, or drive me nuts or, and the circumstance. And let me share this with you. If you think that I am poison proof, in school we used to call it cootie proof. No such thing. The more you go deeper in Christ, the more hell tries to poison you. And then he says, watch your doctrine closely. Well, how, how do I do that? Are you biblical? Don't try to add to the Bible. Let, let me give you an illustration about this, parenting, okay? I'm not picking on everybody. Well, you know, the Bible teaches, you know, raise up a child in the way that you go. And the Bible's really tough on parents to be tough on the kids. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? Dr. So-and-so from such and such says, you know, you need to let the kid just do with, blah, 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 blah. you know, like this. Yeah. So you're going to believe Dr. So-and-so or you're going to believe the Bible because you only got one chance to raise that kid. Okay? And when your kid is boss of the house then there is something biblically wrong with you. And the place went quiet. <laughs> so how do I do this? By studying God's word, by godly friends, by truthful evaluation. And then he says persevere in what? Diligence. It takes work to be diligent for Christ. Persevere and be diligent in all these matters, holy, in life, in doctrine. So somebody says to me, well, what's the application? How do I do this? How do I do this? Are you ready? First application I give to you. Ready? First H, heart. Wherever your heart is, that's where you'll be diligent. Come on, let's talk about it. Some of you like certain music. You make sure you listen to that. You make sure you do. Some of you like certain food, you make sure you eat that. Some of you like to text a lot, you make sure you get time to do that. By the way, texting is addictive. You know, isn't it crazy how you always get time to do what you want? Well, hell's gonna make it so you don't want to pray. Hell is gonna make it you don't want to attend church. Isn't it crazy how many times you have an excuse for not coming to the church on the Lord's day? Isn't it funny how many people will come when we're serving hamburgers, but when we're serving the word of God, well, you know. What? <laughs> so you're putting a veggie burger ahead of Jesus. I'm not even going to tell you where you're going. <laughs> See, where is your heart? 
Now, I've said this before. When I was growing up as a young person, when I was a young person around 400 years ago. I went to my dad when I was 19 years of age and said, I'm never getting married. He said, really? I said, yeah. I said, there's no way. I said, you know, I like a girl, they're great, but after three weeks, and he goes, don't worry, you'll find one girl one day and you'll give her your heart. I looked at him and said, yeah, right, you're flipping nuts. And then I met my wife, and oh, cha-cha. <laughs> it was pitter-patter, let me at her. See, here's the craziest thing. My dad was right. See, when you have your heart with Jesus and not with other things, and all of hell is going to try to distract you or make you busy. When your heart is with Jesus, then Jesus is number one, and you'll be diligent. You'll give to him wholly. You'll pers be persistent. Why? And you'll progress because your heart's with Jesus. After I go to the washroom in the morning, I have a little ritual. I go to the side of my bed and give Jesus the first part of my day. And I kneel down beside my bed. My family knows, leave me alone. I'm not there for a long time, but I want him to know that he's first thing in my life. The last thing in my life before I go to sleep, I kneel down in the same spot and I give him my life again. And throughout the day, I'm talking to him. Yesterday I was on my motorcycle having the greatest time, doing around 135 on the 401, trying to keep up to a Ferrari. And I was just having the time of my life praising the Lord singing unto him, doing 135. Guy with the Ferrari looked at me because I was going to pass him. And I go, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Why? Because my heart is not with the Ferrari. My heart is with Jesus. Number two, health. When you're poisoned, you lose your diligence for Jesus. You know, I don't need to go to church. I can watch it on live stream. Or, you know what, two nights from now, let's watch it on YouTube. So basically you're saying, I'm coming to church because I'm gonna get something out of it instead of give something to it. Let me give you an illustration of this. After service today, we're going outside to have hamburgers, hot dogs, and veggie burgers. Now, here's the craziest thing. All of hell wants you to use this excuse, which I have because I'm an introvert. I'm shy. If somebody's gonna to talk to me, well, I'll, t I'll be nice, but I'm, I, I, I can't do it. Can I tell you something? Let me give you the words of my famous wife whenever I pull the introvert card, Shelley, I can't do that. She goes, suck it up, buttercup. She says, you can do it, but you don't want to do it. See, the fact is this, I really do what I want to do most of the time. But when I don't want to do something, then I use an excuse like I'm an introvert. So what? Does it matter? Health. So there, here, 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 is there, here it is. Are you ready? The first thing is this. Timothy, get educated in God's word so that you're diligent and you're doing what he wants you to do and you're progressing in him. Be educated in God's word. Second thing under health is examine to make sure you're doing God's will. How? Doing God's word. In other words, you, you examine yourself, Timothy. 
to see, are you diligent? Are you an example to the believers? Are you preaching the word? Are you, are, are, where, where, where in the examination are you off course? So, so education from the word, examination, and then the third one is evaluation. Get somebody like me, the Apostle Paul, to come along and say, hey, Timothy, you need to da, 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 speak into your life. But then the last thing is to do. You need to do. Now, let, let me talk to you, okay? I'm just gonna tell you. Recently, and the Lord, he never said shut up, but recently I've recognized I've been talking too much when I'm praying. How many of you, 99% of your prayer life is you talking to God? Okay? And, and the Lord, Lord uh, just said, uh, Lord started showing me all these scriptures. Wait upon the Lord, be still and know that I am God. Meditate upon him. Hear his voice. And the Holy Spirit just started talking to me. So I, ed I went to the scripture, I started educating myself on prayer because I, I'm feeling in my heart I'm talking too much and I'm starting to read these scriptures where the Lord wants to minister to me. Be still and know that I am God. And I started to examine and realize that 99% of my prayer life, I'm talking to him and then walking away. And then I started to evaluate by asking a couple of my friends, hey, you, how, how do you hear the voice of God? And they started talking to me about it. But the last one I give to you is not an E, it's a D, do. And now in my prayer life, I've started to build in slowly, and maybe it should be a little faster, I'm 80-20, 80% 80 talking to God, 20% listening. Now somebody says, so what have you heard from God? Well, here's the truth. Today, in my quiet time, when I was listening, I heard the Lord speak to me and say, cast all your worries on me because you're a winner through Christ Jesus. And I needed to hear that. So there, there's the heart, there's the health. How do I do this? Through the Holy Spirit. See, God never left me alone. God wants the Holy Spirit to come in and, and help me. Did you hear? Get rid of the poison. Get rid of the things that are stopping my heart. He, he wants to come in the Holy Spirit and help me to be diligent. He wants the Holy Spirit to help me with, with, with my health. He wants to, the uh, Holy Spirit wants to help educate me from the word, wants to help examine me. The Holy Spirit wants to help evaluate with people coming in my life. And he wants to help me do so that I am what God wants me to do. Timothy, I'm not writing this so that you have a guilt trip. I'm writing this so that you grow in Christ. See, life is not a game. Here's the truth. Life is real. We need to live, love, and have life through Jesus. He's our Lord. Let, 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 let me talk to you uh, about this. This happened uh, in our church. A, a young man in our church who will go nameless. He's in one of the schools in, in the greater Toronto area. I won't tell you what school board he's in. And the teacher found out that he's a born-again Christian and he goes to church on the Queensway. And the teacher after school says, I want you to stay behind, I need to talk to you. And he thought he was in trouble. So he stayed behind and sat there waiting for the teacher. And all of a sudden another teacher came in. And they said, uh, we understand you're a Christian, yes. We also understand that your church really is very supportive of heterosexuals. And he said, yes, we believe that biblically. And then the two teachers looked at him in grade 11 and said these words, how do you know you're heterosexual unless you try the other side and see if you like it? Right? Now this young man in our church, who will remain nameless, he reads his Bible and he prays every day, comes to church, and he's trying his best to make Jesus Lord of his life. That's, he's trying. He's trying to be diligent. And this fallacy, you know, you have to be 25 before God can use you, is absolutely absurd because Jesus, as a little boy, was used in the temple. 
Okay, just absolutely, sir. His prayer that morning before he left, because he was late for school, was, Jesus, use me today. <laughs> that was his prayer. By the way, sometimes the shortest prayers are the best. And he looked at the teachers, and they said, you, you need to be open-minded. You need to try the other side before you can agree with your church. And he looked at them and said, so do you suggest I try arsenic too? He says, because basically, I really don't believe I should take arsenic, but should I try it just to make sure? And they both looked at him and said, get out of here. And he said, okay, God bless you. And he walked out. <laughs> what does the Bible say? Jesus will never leave me or forsake me. But Timothy, here's the truth. I want you to be that example. I want you to be, I want you to minister. I want you to do all this. But here's the key. Don't let something else in your life be more diligent than the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Progress. Persevere. Christ, it's holy. Not only H-O-L-Y, but holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, where you wholly give your life to him. So he's Lord. Let me talk to you about poison, okay? And I end with this. We, we were away, my wife and I, and we were ministering, and I won't tell you where we were, and after service on Sunday night, God was really gracious to us. Uh, a couple came up to us and said, could you come back to our house we were telling our, our family, our, 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 our children don't go to church, but they would like to meet you and talk to you about why they don't go to church and why they disagree with the way you serve Jesus. No problems. I love going to Zacchaeus' house. It's more fun than going to anybody else's house. So we get over there, and I'm tired, but it, it, it's late at night, but you know, I, I'm excited because we're gonna sit down with people who really don't like the church and have a good discussion. Well, when I walk in, there are kids still up who are under five years of age. And they're in the living room playing with all the adults. And so I got down on the ground and we started to play hide and go seek and so forth. Why my wife went over and be diplomatic, shake hands and sit down and talk to them, right? And they're waiting for me to come. And I would rather play with the kids on the floor than go deal with these poison Christians. And all of a sudden, my wife comes over and goes, we're not here for the kids, could you please come over here now? And I walk over and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, be direct. And that's very hard for me to do. <laughs> and I sat down and I said, it's really late, you're probably tired, I am too, what's your problem? <laughs> and they said, excuse me? I said, I understand that you went to Bible college. I went, you went, used to go to church. You don't go to church now, but you keep telling me, tell, you keep telling everybody you're Christians, but you, you, and you, these kids have never been to church at all. What is your problem? And my wife says, he's kind of straight up. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the poison. We were at Bible college. And the guy who was the president of the Bible college was also the pastor. And, and he, he did something wrong and he got fired from the church. Nothing sexually, but he got fired from the church. And, and the fact is this, it, you, we can't trust any leaders now. Therefore, we're not gonna go to church. And, they, and you can just see poison, right? Poison. Hell had stopped them from being diligent for Jesus. Hell had stopped them from progressing. Hell had stopped them from having And I looked at them and I said, biblically, show me where you're right. 
And one of them says, no, you show us biblically where you're right. And I said, sure. I said, who's the head of the church? If you're Bible students, Jesus. So when you don't go to his church, when he's head, what are you doing to Jesus? You're slapping him in the face. And for the next hour and a half, we sat there and we started to deal with the poison. And I said, by the way, don't you blame the church. Your eyes were on the pastor instead of your eyes being on Christ Jesus. Your pastor is human. Christ is the Son of God. Don't drink the poison. <laughs> Here's the truth, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, and I mean it. You really think your feeble excuses that are riddled with the smell of hell are going to stand up when you kneel before the King of Kings and the Lord Lords after you leave Mother Earth? Well, here's the truth. If Jesus is Lord, then he's number one. And your life will show it by being diligent, progressing, persevering. And people will see Christ. And that's what Paul is saying to Timothy. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. 